I found a, a different lavalier microphone in the drawer, so it seems like this one works okay. It's not going to be booming like the other one. So the lectionary returns now. We had a, a day break yesterday because of uh, Feast of Mark with its own proper readings, but we return to the uh, series from Acts of the Apostles, which is describing almost an idyllic uh, early Christian community in today's reading. The gospel enters uh, a conversation in process uh, between Jesus and Nicodemus. So we begin, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Again, we open ourselves to his spirit present for us in this place. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Enable us, we pray, Almighty God, to proclaim the power of the risen Lord, that we who have received the pledge of his gift may come to possess all he gives when it is fully revealed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. Thus Joseph, also named by the apostles Barnabas, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite, a Cypriot by birth, sold a piece of property that he owned, then brought the money and put it at the feet of the apostles. The word of the Lord. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is king in splendor robed. Robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. And he has made the word, the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old, from everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Alleluia, alleluia. The Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can this happen? And Jesus answered and said to him, You are the teacher of Israel, and you do not understand this? Amen, amen, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. 
but you people do not accept our testimony. If I tell you about earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. So the, uh, the Gospels now for Easter season uh, are no longer the types that we had during the octave, during those first eight days. During those, they were post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. Now, we're even revisiting some Gospels, but you might say in sort of the light of resurrection faith. This event takes place way back in chapter 3 of John's Gospel. Nicodemus, who is one of the leading Pharisees, uh, has come to Jesus by night, so under the cover of darkness, uh, it's probably politically incorrect uh, for him to be there, but he seems to be not like uh, the typical Pharisees in the Gospels who are out to get Jesus and are trying to catch him. Nicodemus seems to be almost on the verge of being a disciple himself. He wants answers, and so he comes to, to speak with Jesus. In this conversation today, and it continues tomorrow, uh, Jesus has told him he needs to be born again. Uh, it surprised Nicodemus. I mean, he even asked, is, how can a person go back into their mother and be born again? But Jesus said, uh, really, nothing short of being a new person is what's expected. Uh, this appearance of God in the person of Jesus uh, is so radical that when people encounter him uh, and want to come to faith, it calls them to be something new, uh, to leave old parts that are uh, best left behind, uh, to rise to the new person that faith and baptism calls them to be. This is the same Jesus when he started his public ministry, uh, like John the Baptist, his message was to repent. Repent, in the language of Jesus, literally meant to turn around, uh, to become something totally new. It's not a cakewalk to be a disciple of Jesus. Uh, he calls people through, down through history, including you and me, uh, to do something uh, that on our own would be impossible, but we have the grace of God and the grace of discipleship. Uh, we hear these words of Jesus to Nicodemus. It's gonna to continue tomorrow. The, the first line of tomorrow's gospel, it's been called a, a gospel within a gospel. I think if you, it's been said if you had to uh, boil down uh, all four gospels into one sentence, it's gonna be the first sentence of tomorrow's uh, gospel reading. It's a rich, exchange between Jesus and Nicodemus. We're people who've come to faith, and so the words of Jesus challenge us to be new people, to be, as it were, born again, to start fresh, leave behind the old, and to become new people. We do so because Jesus leads us to salvation. And so, out of our confidence, in him, in, in the resurrection, we're able to place again all of our prayers in his hands. We always remember our family and friends, our neighbors, members of the parish here, especially those who are calling out for some kind of healing and hope in a difficult way today. We pray to the Lord. Today's Mass intention is to remember uh, Mary Rayo. We certainly do so. We also continue to pray for an end to this senseless war in Ukraine, uh, uh, also a definitive end to the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, you've called each of us here to be disciples. We ask for the abandon and the trust to follow Jesus without reservation, and we ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The same Jesus who engaged Nicodemus uh, in such an intimate conversation also taught his disciples how to pray. We have his very prayer and so we can say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's turn to one another then and offer some sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you today, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.